taking the time to uh, join us this evening, and I hope you'll find it interesting. Um, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, just before we get started, I just want to uh, elaborate on something that Vic pointed out, and that is the collaboration that's taken place between the Department of Surgery and the School of Computing. Um, and uh, Gabor Fitchinger, Professor Fitchinger, is here today. Uh, he is uh, the head of the uh, School of Computing and has been absolutely uh, a key member of this, along with uh, Tomas uh, Ungi, who has, uh, he's our nuts and bolts guy, he's figured this whole thing out. Um, when this concept was developing, uh, I met with a, a bunch of people, but got glazed eyes, and nobody really was interested until I talked to those two. And the lights went off, and that was it. So um, what I'd like to do tonight is just um, give you an overview of what it is we've done. We've got the system set up here, a model for it, so afterwards you can come down and we can show you how that works. So just to um, clarify, other than I, I really like this project, I have no conflicts of interest. So breast cancer is not uh, an uncommon uh, phenomena, and worldwide it's the most common cancer that women will uh, develop. In Canada alone, this year, roughly 24,000 women will be diagnosed. With the increasing use of screening, and uh, here it's through the Ontario Breast Screening Program, we're picking cancers up at an earlier uh, stage. And what that means is that they're non-palpable cancers. In other words, we can't feel them. So this is what the radiologists are looking for, um, an area of density in the breast. Uh, it's spiculated, it's irregular in shape, and it's highly worrisome for malignancy. Once women are diagnosed with a non-palpable tumor, they want to have what we call breast conservation or a lumpectomy done. So what that means is at the end of the surgery, the breast looks essentially uh, the same as it did when we started, and they would get radiation to supplement the uh, surgery. If, however, we're going to uh, be effective at breast conservation, a few things have to happen. And number one is we need to be able to identify uh, the cancer. And the gold standard right now is to use a needle and a wire uh, put into the tumor to show us where that is. Once we've identified where the tumor is, we need to take it out with what we call clear margins. In other words, there's no cancer sitting at the point where we cut through the tissue. So the pathologist tells us that. Um, and that result usually takes about two weeks to get back we think we got it all, the pathologist says, nope, your margin is positive. In other words, cancer is right up to where I cut. That means we have to go back and do more. So there's a bit of a balance in that I could get clear margins on everybody if I took all the breast tissue, but that's not very cosmetic. So we're trying to take a minimal volume of breast tissue to maintain a nice cosmetic outcome, but still be able to achieve uh, a negative margin. So this is how we're localizing the tumors. Our patients present to the radiology department uh, first thing in the morning, and the radiologist identifies the area of concern. They put a needle and a wire, and the wire has a little hook. You can see it here. And basically, that's what we're working with. The radiologist will give us a written description saying the wire is seven centimeters long, the tumor is about a centimeter and a half from the end of the uh, wire, and from that point, it's kind of guesswork. So this is a very typical picture of the tissue that we would have removed. So this then goes back down to radiology, and they'll x-ray it again to make sure that the, the cancer is in there. But you can see how much breast tissue we took out just to get that little tumor out, and often we didn't do as good a job as we thought. So. Even using these current strategies, there's upwards of 47% of these cases return with a positive margin. And if we get a positive margin, that means we have to take the patient back to the OR, 
to re-excise that area of the breast. So it utilizes OR time that now can't be used for new patients. They're going to have to wait longer. The results are not as nice, so they get a poor cosmetic result. And it delays that patient's adjuvant treatment. And what I mean by adjuvant treatment is radiation or, or chemotherapy. So if we can avoid it, we certainly would like to. So there are other methods out there for localizing the uh, tumor, and they're listed here. The problems with these is they're a bit cumbersome, they're very expensive, and they're all fraught with some problems. So tumor localization, to be effective, has to delineate the tumor well, even in mobile breast tissue. So it's not like that tumor just sits there. It, it wiggles around to a limited degree. It has to be easy to use. It has to be cheap. And the best method to do it, we think, is using electromagnetic navigation. So this is the conceptual diagram. So what we've done is we've added EM sensors to everything that we would use in the operating room. So the patient gets an EM sensor so we know where they are. The tumor, the wire, and the needle gets an EM sensor, and now we know where it is in relation to the patient. The cautery unit, which is the basically the hot knife, the instrument we use to cut through breast tissue, has an EM sensor, so now we can tell where it is in relation to all of these things. And we use an ultrasound at the beginning of the case to show us where the tumor is and make a virtual margin, which we'll talk about. All of this is accomplished through a program uh, called the uh, Slicer GT uh, program. So it, what it does is it, it keeps everything in relation to its other, uh, the other components, much like a, a GPS system does. So here are just some pictures. So this is the wire that the radiologist puts into the tumor. We attach our uh, EM sensor, and this is somewhat rudimentary now, but uh, when when and if this is mass produced, that'll be a much smaller sensor and may even have the sensors in the needles. So the radiologist puts the wire into the tumor. So we then develop this virtual margin around it, and we'll show you how we do that soon. So now we know that that's where we have to focus and our cautery will come down and we can stay in uh, just in or outside of that margin. So this is uh, just a picture of the early development. This is just a gel model with a tumor in it. We're doing ultrasound and trying to put a needle in it. And once we've, uh, once we've found the, the tumor, we do the ultrasound. That then uh, allows us to put out a virtual margin around that. So here, for example, is the um, wire that shows up on our screen. The uh, tumor is this uh, object here that shows up on the ultrasound. And we've started to build a virtual um, margin around that. So this is what we see on the screen right at the bedside in the operating room. And this is just the end result. So we've stayed right on that margin and taken out uh, that tumor. So this is just an example of our early work that we were doing with gel models. So when we did that, we did 42 uh, excisions or lumpectomies using uh, either the traditional technique or the EM technique. And what we saw was we cut the risk of uh, having a positive margin in half. And a lot of the individuals that were using this were residents who really, they're not uh, very experienced at doing it. So uh, it works with people that aren't perfectly adept at it either. So we then moved on to testing it in real tissue. And we did that through cadaver experiments. And this is just, again, an ultrasound of the tumor and a, a map, which we'll show you later. So, how this works, we have our patient in the operating room. They have their cancer. The wire uh, is now within the cancer. We bring in the uh, ultrasound machine with the position tracker, the EM uh, tracking. 
The patient gets a sensor. The wire gets a sensor. We then do an ultrasound of the uh, tumor. We predict our virtual margin. So we, with the ultrasound, we can see exactly where the tumor is. And by a touch screen technology, we just touch around that tumor where we think we should be cutting. So that's the virtual margin that then generates this 3D margin that uh, uh, projects on the screen. We then get rid of the ultrasound because we don't need it anymore. And some of the other techniques require that ultrasound to be there all the time, which is, it truly is a nuisance. So with our cautery unit, it has an EM sensor as well. And we're guided by this uh, image on basically the screen in the operating room. Whoops. So it's color coded as well. So when we're outside of the uh, virtual margin, and here's our cautery unit, here's the wire, it's green. If we get too close or we get in it, it turns red and there's a, um, a little auditory signal as well to tell you that you've messed up. So this is just a larger image of uh, our virtual margin that we would generate. So you can see the wire coming in here. Here's the cautery unit. And we, pl we plot all these points based on the ultrasound image. And we do the touch screen technology. And then the Slicer uh, GT program generates that into a uh, 3D. It is a Slicer program that does that. But into a, a 3D virtual margin. So these are just some examples. We did a safety trial just in the OR to see that it wouldn't impede with flow in the OR, that we didn't uh, cause Stera, sterility issues and everything worked extremely well. This is a, just a picture actually when we started using this on um, patients who had palpable tumors. So again, we wanted to do a safety trial just to make sure that if something went wrong with our system, that we wouldn't be putting the uh, patient in jeopardy. So we chose patients who had palpable tumors because then we know where the tumor is already, but we would do all the steps. We would put a wire in, all the same things. And uh, what we found with that is that there were no issues uh, as far as the flow of the operation. Um, we were able to do six patients in this fashion. And um, the important thing here is all six had negative margins. And it really took very little time to set this up. So with experience, we were able to bring our times down and the last one we did was six minutes. And what that time is getting, getting everything configured, doing our plotting of the virtual margin, uh, et cetera. So it's quick and it's, it's easy. So as I said, with those six patients, uh, registration time was a minimum of uh, six minutes. We had no issues with sterility. The nurses were happy with the setup. We weren't getting in the way of everybody. And those who used the technique, and uh, it was myself and Ross Walker, who's the other breast surgeon, uh, didn't have any issues with it. It was easy to use. Uh, it didn't really cause a problem. So these were very favorable uh, results. So. Because of that, we want to now move on and we have approval, uh, ethics approval, to go on to do a, a study on non-palpable uh, tumors. So this is the, where the benefit will really be seen. Uh, and what we're hoping uh, to set up is a randomized uh, controlled trial, uh, initially in uh, Kingston alone, uh, comparing the traditional um, needle localization with the EM navigated needle localization. So we'll determine whether there truly is a difference in the positive margin rates with this technique, and I suspect strongly that it, it will. Um, the final thing here is a bit premature, but uh, there is a, an, quite an ingenious uh, invention that uh, was developed in England, which uses um, it, it uses mass spectrometry to uh, assess the smoke that's produced by the cautery unit. And they can tell you the minute they're in cancer uh, because the computer analyzes that smoke. However, 
we've been in common uh, in communication with them because, I mean, it's a great system. The flaw is that they get in the tumor and we can keep them out of the tumor. So it's going to be uh, quite beneficial for both parties and that's coming down the road. So what can we conclude from all this? EM navigation uh, in breast conserving therapy provides a real, real time feedback. It's easy to use. It uh, may indeed significantly reduce the uh, incidence of positive margins during our first attempt at taking out that tumor. And in doing so, will save us uh, OR time, make us much more efficient. As well, some of the preliminary work has shown that the volume of tissue that we've removed actually is smaller uh, and that it was quite consistent with all of the people that have tried it. So hopefully we can get clear margins with less tissue, better cosmesis, and we'll do it on the first go. So it can also be used in a variety of other uh, surgical procedures and we've enticed some of the uh, hepatobiliary surgeons to look into this as well. So taking tumors out of liver uh, may also uh, find a use for this. So I'd like to thank uh, the uh, Department of uh, Computing because without them nothing would have happened and uh, Tomas who's here tonight who's going to help us with this has been instrumental in that. Gabriel Gauvin is a resident who has been working with me on this and has uh, also uh, played a key role in the development of this program. And as well, this summer we had a uh, high school student, Aidan uh, Batch, who was working with Dr. Gabor Fitchdinger, and uh, he worked on some of the, um, the basic uh, projects. So uh, I would like to thank all of you. If there are any questions, I'm very happy to address them.